Bit worried. Right, so here I am in uh, York Cycle Works uh, Bike Fit Studio with Ryan from uh, York Cycle Works. Obviously, Cycle Works is going to be at the Cycle Expo Yorkshire. Uh, so, this is part of my continuing campaign to get myself sorted out on a bike and also kind of showcase the people who are going to be at the show who can sort you out on the bike. So, Ryan, what are we going to do today, hopefully? So, uh, the bike fit principle um, process in short is a three part process. So, we start with an interview, we get a context for the uh, bike fit. We learn about the individual who we're fitting to. So any good bike fit should be considerate of the individual and what they want to do on the bike. Yeah, because there's no like single golden formula. You can't just look at people anatomically and just go, Absolutely. there's a lot going on and people yeah. want to achieve different things as well, presumably. Exactly. Um, so a bike fit is a, only a snapshot in time of the individual, uh, what they want to be doing with the bike, arguably over the next 12 months or so. Yeah. Um, and those things change. It's a snapshot yeah. in time. And, and also it'll change on depending on the type of bike as well, presumably. Very I mean, if you get someone coming in here for a Madone fitting, That'd be very different to a Damani fitting or a, you know, a full stash fitting or exactly. a, I mean, sorry, I'm just going Trek here because we've got, it's a, it's a, it's a Trek fitting machine. Uh, so, and again, Powerfly is a different kettle of fish to a exactly. district and all those kind of things. So Yeah, it's, uh, there's maybe a misconception that bike fitting is just for road bikes and time trial and triathlon bikes, but no, um, the principles of what we do here apply directly to mountain biking of all disciplines and yeah. commuting, etc. Because if you're comfortable on the bike, you're more likely to ride it more and you'll get more benefit from riding it and less injury. Absolutely. So, good things. Yeah, all of those things are mutually beneficial. So, if we can make you more comfortable, we've often made you faster, more efficient and more preventative yeah. of injury. Yeah. Cracking. Right, so what's the first step? So, the first step is learning about you guys. So, learning about what sort of riding you do um, and what are your goals over the next 12 months and anything we need to be working around. <laughs> Right, I don't think you really need to share that information. <laughs> you don't need to know that. You, yeah, yeah, dark places, dark places. But yeah, we'll crack on with that now and uh, jump back in with some more video later. Right, so we've been through a bunch of measurements already in terms of cleat position and uh, flexibility. Uh, just sort of, you taking a general view around of what curious shape I am. Yeah, a few basic observations, so some standard observation work, um, having a look at uh, cleat condition crucially and uh, initial cleat position before we assess that uh, when we get onto the bike, um, and some um, shoulder width and inseam measurements just to give us a, a starting point for the fit check. Um, so we'll move a little more in depth now um, onto the massage couch. Um, no massage I'm afraid, but uh, we've got some... Uh, more of an autopsy. More of an autopsy. <laughs> <laughs> onto the marble slab of fitting. Uh, so the flexibility, range of motion tests, having a look at uh, any functional or indeed actual dysfunction, uh, discrepancy. Because um, yeah. you've gone through all of the sort of history of injuries and what things I do and don't notice on the bike, and like that, and kind of what my personal preferences are. And yeah, we're building what we're trying to achieve, basically, as well. Yeah, we're, we're building up a roadmap in our in our uh, mice together of, of what we might expect when we get you on the bike there. So um, everything we do is evidence based. Um, we can only make uh, solid, concrete judgments um, and suggestions of improvements if we know about the rider yeah. um, on and off the bike, and that's the importance of the physical screening um, process. And we kind of had a bit of a chat before uh, about kind of there's a lot of pain. You can get a very you know just a pain by numbers bike fit, yeah. but beyond that, there's some artistry and there's some experience. And I guess you, as an artist, of getting the bike fit right, but also you've got to take into account what colours people like. And you know, if you, can, you know, if you want to make the picture really work for them, absolutely. Like bright colours are they colour blind? You know, <laughs> you know, do they? You know, particularly like that flower. If you're doing a bunch of flowers, I guess it's, you know, I'm blown it. No, no, that went too far. To be honest, but <laughs> it was a good. It was a good analogy, and I broke it by not showing up in time. Weirdly, that never happens normally. Really? Okay. I've seen your reviews. Yeah. So, Yeah, 
So we're actually on the rig now, and already some very interesting things you find out, Ryan. For start, what I thought was kind of the right satellite does seem to be roughly right based on the old measurements. Um, but I'm very, very heel up in terms of the pedaling, as you're saying. Like a ballerina. Yeah, yeah, I'm good at heels. <laughs> but if I flatten my feet now, I'd probably get more, what do you say, it'd be less calf dependent. Uh, a little bit less calf recruitment. Ultimately, uh, we're allowing the shoe and the pedal complete system, which is very stiff and very supportive. We're allowing it to do that job rather than using accessory muscles to yeah. do that stability work. Yeah. So we're, we're offloading those accessory muscles and focusing your energy in getting those pedals around yeah. in an efficient manner. Because although I've got relatively big calf, unfortunately, they're the smallest muscle in the leg. Yeah. Oh, they should be, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at them, they're probably the largest. It's all turning in nowhere. We see. all could be very different shapes and sizes. Yeah. But yeah. again, over the past like, okay. we've spent 38 years, yeah. I've mostly developed a muscle layout like a waitress. Absolutely. In high heels. And that's 38 years of learned behaviour. Yeah. Billions, if not billions, of um, repetitions yeah. of that learned behaviour. Yeah. The, you know, all, the, all the postural coaching in the fit studio isn't going to look Yeah, that. but also, yeah. you change cleat position as well. And that feels really good. That feels, yeah, that feels absolutely spot on. The support feels much more, it feels like it's in the right place. Even though in my head, I want to be further forward on it. You know, I want to pedal further under the floor, but yeah. actually this feels like a really strong position. Yes, that, that uh, plate underneath uh, four of your toes is only going to promote that, that kind of yeah. fast position. That's probably why I felt it fitted better, yeah. though that's not necessarily impacted. Absolutely. The other thing was something with happen to recruit yeah. the glutes. A bit of postural yeah. coaching. Yeah, it's a bit of, you know, a bit of elocution, really. Yeah. But in a sense, it's like, especially if you're riding like that, I think that, but as soon as I did it, as soon as I kind of straightened my back out, or in my head that's what happened, it suddenly felt like I was actually uh, riding downhill. Practice makes perfect in these things. Modern working conditions often, uh, we see a lot of riders, let's put it differently, a lot of riders with um, poor postural coaching, poor postural conditioning on the bike, yeah. and it can be the difference with a bike that feels too long, a bike which feels uncomfortable, and no amount of on the bike adjustments can um, help that rider, rider feel comfortable. And often it comes down to that postural coaching, yeah. core strength and conditioning to be able to do that work for them. So it's not all yeah. about the bike. Yeah, it's it's weird. Like, it makes you feel I'm concentrating on it. Yeah. You can actually feel my big shorts moving. Yeah. You can actually feel the straps kind of going, all right, okay, they're changing the position. They're not, I'm not slumped anymore. Absolutely. And I'm not, you know, massaging my gut around with your legs. <laughs> so it's, it's more open hip angle, which is more efficient. Absolutely. And, and you're saying it feels much more upright, but actually, just looking in the screen there as a reflection, there's no real difference. There's no difference. The head's naturally higher, so it's yeah. easy to look about. So it's like a strain on my neck and my shoulders aren't dropped and reducing it's not the sensation. Really, you know, it doesn't feel like it's all hanging across my ribcage. Exactly. Um, yeah. It's a more sustainable position in the long run and it's better for your back health. Yeah. Um, it reduces the amount of As I do it, it's just that feeling that suddenly the pedal got lighter. Yeah. You know, the chains <laughs> come off. Yeah, literally, it's different. It's been going like that, but I'm like, chewing a bit. Uh, I mean, like you said, that'll take some adjusting to. And after that, my buttocks are probably going to be going, what have you been doing? They'll be on fire. This isn't what we do. But it is fascinating, you know, as an old dog learning new tricks. This has been properly fascinating. Of course, and now the condition can certainly help. Yeah. Yeah. And now we're looking at pressure mapping on the saddle. Is that right? Absolutely. So your relationship with the saddle in the most objective way to quantify that. Again, this is only a, a tool in our armory uh, to help influence uh, our judgment and decisions yeah. in achieving the perfect bike yeah. for you. Um, so viewing that much level pressure there, overall, you spread over a wider area, so I've shifted back on the saddle. Yeah, let's take a snapshot in time. You keep... Uh, you that's what feels natural yeah. there. And presumably that's me to uh, issue your bones there. You ride like that for me, guy. We'll uh, right. take a snapshot. There was a few. Just shoot me back, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Well, it's very relevant to talk yeah. through it. So, um, every plot of pressure is different. 
and everybody's individual tolerance is the pressure, and what's right for them is very different. So, um, the success or the saddle isn't just down to the saddle choices, the relationship with the other contact points. Yeah. Um, without pressure mapping technology from GBMIs, you can quantify your relationship with the saddle in a very objective way. So, that's down to uh, middle last and pressure. Yeah. With our scale on the right hand side, we can look at the symmetry between the contact points and left and right. You can look at the way you're positioned on the saddle, front to rear, and the left to right, and indeed quantify your movement across the saddle as well. Yeah, I think I've just shifted position there. Yeah. But it's, it shows how effective it is for spotting it. But. Absolutely. So, Looking at that, yeah. is that is this a saddle that suits me, or would you suggest? Well, this is sitting on the narrow part of the saddle there, naturally. Yeah. And uh, it depends on the design of the saddle, ultimately. Yeah. So because this is quite a broad saddle, isn't it? It's quite and I typically favour a narrow one. Yeah. Absolutely. But you were, you questioned that as soon as I said it, didn't you? Yeah. The saddle design has moved on a very long way in yeah. a very short period of time. Um, the flavour of the month tends to be shorter. Bit saddle, yeah. broader, maybe a little broader yeah. back to achieve a better connection, better engagement with but the saddle. To be fair, I've used some rough old saddles and I've never had a problem, so yeah. maybe I haven't moved on. I guess that, that is a part of it. Yeah. Is that, you know, yes, technology is moving on, but and there are more saddles available to fit more people. You've got a whole wall of different options over there. Oh, and that's scratching the surface. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the traditional long, narrow saddles don't necessarily bring about issues per se, yeah. but do they bring anything to the table yeah. in terms of pressure relief, yeah. support stability of your engine room? Yeah. Um, if, you're, if your pelvis is stable, there's a, lot, there's a lot less taxing on your core and everything like that. Absolutely. And a lot of companies now do a sort of trying to pull, well not a trying to pull you by, but if you don't get on with it and you haven't stress yourself on the saddle. Yeah. Uh, you can bring it back and get a reading and try something else, can't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, we work a lot with Bond Driver being a threat dealer and they have a condition of guarantee for 30 days. Um, by far away our favourite way to go about optimizing your the success of any saddle is by looking at it objectively yeah. and in the big studio. Um, we want to see fewer returns and we want happier customers. Yeah. Amen, amen to that. Amen to that, yeah. absolutely. Um, so that's not necessarily a bad looking for pressure, but I would say that we can uh, find some improvements. Um, there's a little bit of asymmetry, there's quite yeah. high maximum pressure there. Um, yeah. There is a lot of stability, there's not a lot of movement across the saddle, but it would suggest you can use more weight bearing on the right hand side. Yeah. It looks like some unequal contact with skeleton, you won't to hold yeah. to, to hold you up and support yeah. you. Um, soft tissue. Yeah. Um, so we've got a little bit of work to do. Right. So whether that's changing the handlebars, the position, saddle height, saddle setback, angle of saddle, the knee choice of saddle, a bit of work to do there yeah. to achieve. Do you have a quick word to do that now? Absolutely. Right. So what's interesting now is we actually just uh, changed the saddle angle slightly and immediately uh, it's put a little bit more weight on my arms, so Ryan's also changed the ride height on the saddle. Uh, sorry, on the bars, but you can see on the screen uh, the older trays had actually a higher pressure on the right hand side, and then the second saddle position it's a lower pressure overall, but it shifted the pressure to the left hand side. So, so interesting times. Yeah, a little bit of asymmetry there. Um, these things all, always show up a little uh, surprise from time to time, and there's no yeah, there's, there's, there's no fixed rule. No, there's no fixed rule, absolutely not. We, we must take, still take our subjective conclusions from what is a very objective. Yeah. Um, yeah. But having that as a tool, oh, it's wonderful. Must be amazing. It must be brilliant to work with from your point of view. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a very, very useful, useful tool yeah. to have in our armory. Um, yeah. It's the single biggest reason we see people in the bit studio is with saddle related issues, problems, yeah. injuries, questions. Um, so to have this is, is yeah, really, really handy. Yeah. And fascinating as well. And like I say, you know, Cycle Expo Yorkshire, Ryan and the team will be there, or just pop into York Cycle Works and uh, schedule yourself in for an appointment because it's a fairly lengthy and in-depth process, isn't it? I mean, a typical yeah. consultation would take how long? Uh, generally two to three hours. Um, yeah. 
very generally speaking. Yeah. The session is all about the riding. We can focus that on a uh, uh, particular goal, particular outcome. If the uh, rider particularly suffers with saddle discomfort, then we gear a bit towards that. Yeah. And you don't have to buy a new bike from yourselves to... Certainly not. We'd like you to, but uh, you can come with your original bike. We take the measurements from the bike and put them into our uh, adjustable fitting jeep. Um, and we then dial in the bits of yeah. perfection from there. Oh, you can have it done on a brand new bike. And sometimes, will that sometimes choose the bike you end up recommending to someone? Very much so. You can lead us to a particular geometry, you need a particular brand uh, of bike which works best. Um, the coordinates on our fitting jig um, often highlight, you can ride two or three different brake sizes, but there's often a compromise. And yes. Uh, an optimised frame based on uh, future proofing you fit, ride quality, aesthetics. Yeah. Like and again, that's all experience as well. Yeah. And so how long have you been doing bike fits here now? Uh, so we started bike fitting here about eight years ago. Uh, so we were some of the earlier adopters. Yeah. The uh, track bike fitting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's that's a lot of bike. How many reckon? Four. Top of your head? Yeah. Sorry, I put you on the spot here now, but it's uh, got to be hundreds, doesn't uh, it? At thousands, least. Thousands. Between, between the uh, three of us, John, and yeah. myself, uh, we're certainly into four figures. Easy. Yeah. And then, yeah, all the tools and all the toys in the world doesn't make up for experience. Yeah, exactly. So we're now three saddles into the process. We actually switched to a Bontrager Montrose uh, just because I was interested to try it because it's a saddle I rode on the Trek Top Fuel uh, in the Trek Top Fuel test video that I did a month or so ago. And I really, really got on with it well. So we started off with the broader one and then moved to the narrower one because, you know, looking at these plots on the screen. I am a particularly hard-assed individual with a couple of very specific sort of pressure spots in my pelvis. It's not a sort of broader spread of pressure. And interestingly, although I spend a lot of time talking out my ass, it does seem it knows my ass knows what it's on about because the saddle that I picked out is working really well for me. It seems to be working really well for me in terms of uh, pressure differential and where I'm sat on the saddle, it does seem, you know, that narrower Montrose does seem to be kind of... Yeah, it's, it's reduced maximal pressure by half. Um, you've still got great stability on the saddle, um, very centralised, and actually the symmetry has been vastly improved as well. Um, you're also riding into the part of the saddle that's designed to be ridden on as well. Um, clearly illustrated um, with pressure mapping there. Uh, so yeah, uh, step in the right direction with, with experiments we've been doing, that's the beauty of the Excellent. process. Excellent, yeah, I mean it's been an absolutely fascinating process, really interesting to see what has come out of it and uh, yeah, well just, you know, thanks very much indeed for your time. Pleasure. And uh, obviously, you know, some tweaks and things to go work on, not least these super narrow bars which I'm <laughs> now mentally conflicted but physically quite attracted to, 38 mil bars, never thought I'd go that narrow. But you're saying you're selling so many of those just because you, I mean, you wait, you yeah. measured my shoulders. Yeah. And in theory, I should be on a 36. Yeah, as, a, as an objective measurement of your skeletal anatomy, um, you, you measure closest to being best suited, arguably to a 38 centimetre handlebar. There's a lot of personal preference that comes with yeah. this and riding styles, of course. Um, but would it be perfect? And handling and things like that as well. Absolutely, yeah. It certainly plays a huge part. I mean, that's half the width of the. Uh, Bars I was riding last night on my mountain bike. <laughs> exactly. Um, but you're spending uh, a lot of time in a fixed position, yep. having something which is uh, supportive of your. Uh, which you naturally line up with rather than stretching you slightly, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, another fascinating so, aspect. So. It's made you more error. Yeah, and that's got to be a win. So. <laughs> Not only hopefully am I riding more relaxed, getting less fatigued, but I'm also getting further for the watts I am producing. Absolutely, getting more back in your book. Yeah. Better value for money there. Fantastic, I know, and a brilliant investment of time. People throw a hell of a lot of components and stuff like that, whereas the gains you can make in performance, whether you measure out in comfort, lack of fatigue, or just, just enjoying riding your bike. That's what it's all about. This has got to be one of the best ways to spend money, I would have said, you know. I know, I know on bias, it's the best money you can spend on you, on your bike, on your riding experience. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, changing, yes, you can buy carbon rail saddles or a carbon bar, but equally, you can buy a perfectly serviceable new width bar or a different saddle for relatively cheap, you know. Yeah. Price of a tyre? 
the price of an average tyre, I would say, yeah. I mean, sort of 20, 30 quid, you can already start making significant changes to the way the bike, your bike rides. Absolutely. And of course, just new cleats and moving cleat position, that's, that's under 20 quid. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> winning, absolutely winning. Anyway, look, I've been rattling on for a while. Uh, Ryan, Cycleworks team, thank you massively for your time. Come in and see these guys at Cycleworks in York, or uh, come and see them at... Uh, Cycle Expo Yorkshire, he says. Uh, that's the best of view. Well, I wouldn't say better view, but it gives you the logo better there, doesn't it? So, yeah. But, yeah, thanks massively for, uh, thanks massively for watching, folks. Hope you find it interesting. Uh, again, thanks massively to CycleWorks for the time. And also to my Patreon subscribers for supporting the channel as a whole. Uh, this will be going out to them first as an exclusive and then rolling out onto YouTube later, which is generally how things happen. But also I'm going to be doing a whole load of new, uh, more backroom stuff, which will likely be exclusively on Patreon, because it's going to be a right mishmash of stuff. But if you want to know what the duck looks like underneath the surface, where all the paddling goes on hard, that's all on Patreon. Whereas this beautiful glossy swan, maybe not, on the surface is uh, what you'll see on standard YouTube. So anyway, thanks very much for uh, your time watching. Thanks very much to Ryan's time for all this assessment and fit work. Cheers, brother. Thank you.